Growing up with Indiana Jones was one of the biggest things I loved about growing up in Ireland with me, uh, mom, my pants, four brothers, four sisters. We used to watch Indiana Jones every Christmas and Easter. The films were magic to me, watching Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, a Temple of Doom, The Last Crusade. Those films are magic and gold dust. I love that character. I love Harrison Ford. Um, growing up with that character is something like magic to me. And it's all one, it's one of my all time favorite uh, films. You know, I've got them on Steelbook, the um, you know 4K. Knowing that there was another film coming along, um, I was kind of thinking, nah, never. Disney, you know, we all know what the track of record of Disney's like, especially when it came to Star Wars. They destroyed Star Wars to bits. Um, and knowing that the, another Star, uh, sorry, Indiana Jones was coming, and it's been in the f making for a long time. This film. And um, for me, it was kind of like, I don't think it'll ever get made. And then suddenly they're in pre-production and uh, James Mangold's attached to that. And as soon as I heard that, I went, oh, okay. That's interesting because I loved Ford versus Ferrari. I loved Logan. Um, and I thought, right, okay, this is interesting. A uh, great director. I mean, he is a great director, filmmaker. You've got Harrison Ford coming back. Um, so I was, I had... Um, I, I was really concerned because I thought this is my favourite character of all time coming back to the big screen. Why did it have to be snakes? And it started pre-production and filming and there was loads of rumours coming up and I was following this all over the internet, you know, seeing people put pictures up of uh, all sorts of things like Romans and things like that and bits and pieces apparently what people were saying is that you know, the, the actress that's in the film, you know, and the rumour is that she was going to, you know, he was going to die at the end and she was going to take the whip off him and it was going to be all that. And I was like, no. And uh, I was thinking, please don't do it. And I, I, I believe that. I, I heard all the critics giving it a slating, saying the CGI on Harrison Ford's face is awful. It takes you out of the film. I hear the film is terrible. Critics are slating it left, right, and centre. Some of the people I watch on YouTube won't mention names. They were slating it. I went, oh no. And then I saw people like myself, you know, on Facebook, the you know, the poster trailer, people going, went to see it last night, absolutely loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. And I went, I I'm gonna have to go and see this film. And I went to see it yesterday. And I came out of this cinema happy. I came out of that cinema so happy i was gave a huge clap at the end of that film i loved it i loved every minute of the film um now i went in with a low very low expectations and the reason for those low, low expectation expectations were the critics the critics just basically crapped all over it and made, you know, made people like myself thinking this film is going to be terrible. But the big thing that I learned from this film is say people saying that you know he's, it's it's Phoebe Waller Bridge's character. It's her hit. She's the hero of this film. You know she takes over. And in my mind, I thought Harrison Ford's eighty years of age, and it's great to actually see him again playing the iconic character of Indiana Jones on screen. The first 20 minutes is set back when, you know, I think it's World War II, um, you know, you know Indiana Jones, uh, and that's all I say. And I was blown away by those 20 minutes. The de-aging, I don't get why people are moaning about the de-aging. When you see it in the trailer, you, this is not a spoiler, they lift the bag off uh, Indiana Jones's head, and I went, wow. I literally was shocked. I thought, wow, it, it looks... It looks really good. At no point was I taken out of the, the out of the um, the film itself. Um, in in that first twenty minutes with the de aging, I thought, wow, it is really really good. Um, I love that first twenty minutes. The first twenty minutes is wow, brilliant. I loved all the Nazis and things like that. So that's all I'm going to say because it's in you know it's it's there online. Um, so we get into the whole main film afterwards. We see Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones when he's older, and he's old. He is old. He's 80 years of old age. And, you know, a massive huge clap to Harrison Ford for donning the bloody hat and the whip again. He's old and the film shows it and doesn't portray anything away from the film at all. Um, 
the fact that you've got Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character in it, I've forgotten her, name, her character's name in it, I liked her. I didn't hate her, I liked her. I didn't love her, but I liked her. And at no point does it move away from this is an Indiana Jones film. James Mangold has done an amazing job with this film. He absolutely nailed it. Is it as good as the first three? No, not a chance, not in any way form, but it's close. It comes close to certain points. There's a few bits in the film that people are going to moan about. and uh, I heard some reviews, people are going to be divided by the third act of where it goes. I won't talk about it, but it's something to do with time and all that stuff. But I actually kind of thought, oh, do you know what, I like this. I actually like it. It's something new that we see this hero, you know, 80-year-old character that's climbing bloody hill, you know, um, mountains, and he says he's old, he's got his got creaky bloody knees, and he's got places falling around. I love the fact that he, he, he mentions that he's... You know, he mentions other, other films like, you know, uh, Voodoo and all that, bits and pieces. He talks about being shot. He talks about he was an adventurer and that his body is not used to it and he's now, he's now decrepit. And he's doing what an 80-year-old man shouldn't be doing, climbing stuff and going on an adventure to, but he gets shot and whipped and all that stuff. Praise to Harrison Ford and praise to John's, James Mangold for bringing such a lovable character back to life for one more final outing. I loved the film. I absolutely thought it was amazing. I am I came out of the cinema, absolutely br brilliantly loved the film. Um, the villain that uh, Mads Mikkelsen plays is brilliant. I liked him. I liked him in a lot of film. You know, he played a Nazi and he played it to a T. Um... John Williams soundtrack of listening to when I was in the cinema and basically when you hear the theme of Indiana Jones, my mate was sat next to me and I went, <laughs> I went happy clapping all the way. And I tell you what, at the end of the film, I'm not going to spoil it, but I went, huge clap because that's what it made me feel it brought me back to the days that i was a child with my dad especially with my dad because i i love my dad to bits and he's passed on and you know it's bringing me back to those days where that film was such a classic series to watch have i got any nitpicks yes the film is slightly a bit long fair enough there is bits where the Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character does take some of the limelight away. She does get her own action scenes in this film. But Harrison Ford is 80. People need to get over the fact that this guy is 80 years of age and he does an amazing job at being an 80-year-old character, Indiana Jones with the whip and a hat. But it, she doesn't take the character away from him whatsoever. Yeah, she's a tough character. She's not one of the characters in the other film where they're pretty and dolled up. She's kind of like a book, bookworm, geeky character, but with one of those that wants to take, you know, things and sell them for money. She's got a bit of a dark side to her, and I like that character. I didn't, I didn't feel like she was annoying as everyone was talking about. Um, would I like her to see take the whip and the hat? No fucking way. No chance at all. It's Indy's hat, and at no point does the film try to do that. Um, at any point and that's what I loved about the film it's got teary elements to it now here's one spoiler it's a very small spoiler now I, well, I didn't like um, The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull I might like it now where we re uh, go back to it I've not seen it for years I will go back and watch it and it's about Mutt Williams and this is this is a spoiler they talk about him um, at one point and where he is and what happens to him and, you know, I'm not going to say what happens, but it brought a tear to my eye because of the way Harrison Ford's character shows him. This character is uh, frail. He's lost a lot of stuff in his life. He's been battled and war-torn, and you can see it. His character is flawed in every way possible. From a man that's, you know, we saw in Raiders of Lost Ark being this charismatic action hero that was kind of a woman abuser as well at the same time. And he's frail in this film and you can tell, but he pulls it off to a T and you can tell that this film is about time and age. You know, in my sense, watching this film, that this film Basically, um, nobody's interested in learning about the the past anymore, the history. They're all about into the future and, you know, kids are all about into the radios and all sorts of stuff and they're not interested. And it's an end of an era and Indiana Jones can feel that and he's teaching in the scene, which, it, and again, it was a spoiler and you can tell that the class are not interested, they're bored, they're falling asleep. And it's a shame to see that 
but this is what's happened. It's moved on from the original films that we've seen into a different stage, and it's the end of Indiana Jones as we know him. Indiana Jones, to me, is one of the best characters, and at the end of the film, I, I, I can't lie, I was had tears in my eye of happiness, of joy, of seeing one of my all-time favourite characters return to the big screen. I went in with very low expectations, expecting a really bad film, that they were going to do another um, Star Wars, and they didn't. The film does not pull away from the fact this is an 80 year old man running around. He's frail and the film doesn't pull away. This film is about loss and moving on and people not interested in anymore. It's about old friends coming and lost friends. It's about remorse. It's about giving the fans something back after after the Star Wars for, you know facade, after the Crystal Skull, they gave us something and I don't know why the critics are slating this film. This film is what, I, I, is it 30 or odd years from the last one? How do you expect a film to come from that element and take George Lucas, Steven Spielberg away and give it to a different director? The director knocked it out of the park in my opinion. Yes, the film has got issues. Um, it's got a few issues with maybe the fight scenes being too long. Yeah, some elements where I would say that uh, a little bit spoiler here. I felt like sometimes with the, when they're going for the treasure or you know the the Dial of Destiny, like the traps and stuff like that, there could have been a few more traps and stuff like that. But then that's copying the original other films. But to see um, John Rice Davis again when he comes on, uh, and I'm like. Hey I've got a tear in my eye because it brought me back to a time in my childhood where I loved and to see that again uh, it reminded me of my dad um, because he was well into Indiana Jones and I, I'm so happy that I would go out and I'd watch this film going with low expectations because it's not going to touch the original three by miles it comes close at points because you've seen this character in the three films that I love and then you see him as an old man. He's lost his friends, he's lost his father, he's lost a lot of stuff and when you get to one point in the film you can see why he's so frail and agile. It might make Crystal Skull watchable, um, in my opinion. But I would say the film is great. They don't pass it on, they don't, they don't, they don't kill him off. Indiana Jones, I, 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 this is a spoiler, he doesn't die, there's no wit passing. The film ends with the theme of Indiana Jones, dun, 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 dun. and I gave a massive clap at the end of the film. James Mangold did a great job. It's got flaws, yes, but this is a nature old man running around. Harrison Ford, thank you so much for bringing the character I love back to on screen. James Mangold, thank you so much. I loved it. I can't wait to go and see it again. My dad would have loved this film and it's a shame he's passed away, but it brings me back to that childhood. You know, there is a bit at the end of the film which people are kind of going, oh, I don't get this. So, you know, why did they bring this into it? But I liked it because I was expecting it to be rubbish. I liked it. And if you know what I'm talking about, it's something to do with time and all that stuff because it's the dial of destiny. You put that together and you know dial clocks and all that. And that's what the film is about. It's about time, uh, in the essence of age, and, and where we are in life today. Um, you know, you go from one point to this, next minute you're older, and are you any wiser? Yes and no. It's about loss. Um, the film betrays that in my sense. James Mangold, thank you so much for making my childhood relive in one moment. It's a, it's a great film. I would say, highly suggest go and uh, watch it. Don't listen to all the haters because that's what haters do. They like to do rip on stuff. Thank you so much and take care of yourself. Goodbye now. <laughs>